Hey guys, Mike here. So I wanted to talk about what good finishers do and just how much concrete they can finish when they really know what they're doing. What Luke is doing here is we've got an 80 by 28 slab, so just almost 2,400 square feet. And he's been power troweling and finishing this slab pretty much all on his own. Now, I'm here today with him, but I haven't had really to do any finishing at all. He's been able to handle it all by himself. And what I mean by that is, you know, he's been able to mag and trowel his edges. He's been able to run the power trowel multiple times and get a really nice finish on this concrete. And when you've got a really good experienced concrete finisher, they can finish a lot of concrete. So it's good to be able to depend on them in case you have to leave them by themselves on a job and you know you go do another job you can really get a lot of concrete slabs and floors done in a day when your finishers know exactly what they need to do and know how to time the concrete for finishing so he's getting towards the end of the finishing process here on this slab but this is probably the fourth or fifth time he's gone over it with the power trowel and he's just using the 36 inch power trowel on this too guys so you know the timing of the finishing on something like this when you've got this much to do is really important and then the speed at which you finish it at it is really important too because you, you want this thing to come out really nice and smooth because you don't know we, we don't know if they're going to use the concrete as the finished flooring you know they might stain it and seal it they might polish it or if they're going to put some type of flooring over it. So we always like to finish it really, really nice just in case and give them the option to do whatever they want to do with it later. I mean, so basically what I've been doing here is, you know, I've been just helping him with edges a little bit when he needs it, going around the pipes and stuff like that. But also as the concrete sets up and gets really hard, like it is right now, you know, starting to strip the forms off like that, you can see how nice and smooth those edges came out because for us you know when we do a slab like this we might be in this area today but tomorrow we might be an hour hour and a half away from this area so we like to get everything done the pouring stripping the forms get it sawed I'm going to show you how Luke saws this also with the contraction joints and gets that all done today too that way we're done we're done in the day we get it poured finished stripped sawed all the same day and we don't have to come back for anything and then they can stop backfilling this you know tomorrow if they want so that's what really helps having a good finisher like if I had to if I had to go pour something else today I could leave Luke on this all by himself with confidence knowing that he's gonna get it done and get it done right so when when you got good finishers you know it's important to treat them well pay them well and just make sure you know try to keep them as happy as you can because you want to keep those guys those they're really hard to come by and luke is definitely one of the better finishers in the state you guys if you guys have watched some of my other videos before you've also seen darren it's, it's the same with darren you know darren's just as good a finisher they these guys have both been finishing concrete for me for a long long time and that really helps as a business owner, you know, that really helps out a lot knowing you've got some guys you can really count on each day. So I'm going around pulling the pins, you know, taking the taking the forms off and we'll have these all loaded up. We got a big trailer, we're putting all these on today, so we'll throw them on the trailer, haul the trailer home and then we'll get out of here. But for you guys that don't have finishers like Luke and Darren and or myself, I mean what how do you handle your slabs? Do you just pour one and finish it yourself and that's it? Do you come back the next day to strip your forms? Do you come back to saw your contraction joints or do you saw them the same day in the green concrete like we're going to be doing? Uh, and you'll see that towards the end of the video. Let me know down in the comments just what you guys do and how you handle finishing slabs like this. But if you're new to this channel, you know, my name's Mike Day. This is my channel, Everything About Concrete. We do a lot of different types of concrete work. So if you like that stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week like this, just showing you guys, you know, how to work with concrete, trying to teach as many people as possible that want to learn how to work with this stuff. So you can see the pace that Luke's going at right now. I mean, he's not, he's not rushing by any means. 
he's just going at a nice steady pace. He's got the RPMs on the power trial up as high as they go right now at this point. The, the finish on the concrete is getting really, really smooth. It's getting to that point where we call it shined out or burnt out. So it's it's almost ready to, get to saw. This may be his last pass on this. If, if it is, you know, we'll pull the power trial off and then we'll snap our chalk lines for the saw joints and we'll get sawing right after he gets done troweling. But I just wanted to keep this at at regular speed to show you guys just how fast or slow a finisher needs to go on a slab this size especially one with uh, you know almost 20 years experience like Luke to get this finish on this concrete all by themselves so just check that out I'll be back in a minute
All right, so now what we're doing is we're sawing the contraction joints, and we got saw cuts going every 10 feet, this this lengthwise. So the slabs 80 feet long. So we got seven cuts going this way, and then you can kind of see the blue chalk line going the long way down the middle. The saw we're using is a soft cut saw. It's the X150 Prowler from Husqvarna, and this allows us to saw the concrete when it's really really green. So we just pulled the power trowel off we can get right back on it with the saw get these saw cuts put in and this saw here is made so it doesn't ravel the joints the joints come out nice and clean and and uh, tight what I call tight looking so the, the edges of the saw joint aren't all raveled and sprawled they look really really nice when you're done otherwise you know you'd almost have to wait till the next day if you didn't have a saw like this but this saw here is, is really, really fast when it comes to cutting joints. And then when you do it every day like Luke does, you know, it, you get even faster. It took, you know, we, we laid this out, snapped the chalk lines. And then from the time he started sawing this until he finished was only like literally under 10 minutes. So, I mean, if you compare that versus having to come back the next day to do this, I mean, that literally pays for the saw. The saw is around $2,200, $2,300. So initially, it's a pretty good investment. But, I mean, it pays for itself easily, easily, depending on how much you do in a, at least in a summer, if not in just a, a few weeks almost, in travel time and in wages coming back to saw the next day. We've got three soft cut saws that we use and that just makes our job a lot easier. Now what I'm doing here is when we cross cut our saws, we put a little piece of cardboard down in there. So when the saw crosses over another cut, the concrete doesn't fracture right there because it's so green. You know, when you've got the, the diamond blade going through that joint that's already been cut, it, it would tend to want to fracture that little tiny piece right there. So the cardboard just helps reinforce that, and that's what I'm sticking in there. And then we'll just leave that in there. If you try to pull it out, sometimes you can pull out a piece of concrete with it when it's a screen, so it's best just to leave it in there and pull it out at a later time. You can see how Luke, when he starts sawing, he goes one way, and then comes back, turns around, and goes the other way. That way he doesn't have to, to move the saw off the edge of the slab. Setting the back down in the original cut when the saw is still running is really the key. You know, getting used to doing that so you don't, so you're not off just a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch when you set it back down in there is is what takes a little bit of practice. And the saw comes with a guide too on it. And the guide on this saw is kind of flimsy. It kind of it kind of vibrates too much to be accurate. So the guys just wanted to take the guide off and just use their eye and then a piece of that they use they have like a sight to go by on the front of that saw kind of like when you sight down the barrel of a gun it's basically the same thing and that's what they do and they get the cuts really accurate and straight that way so all I'm doing you can see how much of a help I am I'm just coming behind Luke and booming off the dust um, just helping him out any way I can I was basically, I basically just stayed here today just to get the, the forms all stripped off so Luke wouldn't have to do that while he was finishing. But he would have done it if I'd asked him to. He just would have been here another hour or two longer. But this is the basic process, you know. We, we power trial our slabs, whether it takes one guy like on this one or a couple guys depending on what we're doing. And then we get the saw cuts in the same day. The saw blade goes down about an this is a six and a half inch blade on that so it it'll go down about an inch and a half so it it works really good on slabs you know up to six inches thick you generally want to cut down a quarter of the thickness of the concrete to really make the, the slab uh, crack in the joint so that's just what this does so it's really good for four inch six inch slabs 
And you can see it only, it literally takes him probably under a minute to do one of those cuts right there. And then he's going to turn and come right down this long one. So check that out here. I'm going to show you how he does that. So you can see just how easy loop makes that, that look and I mean it is pretty easy but it does take some practice to make it look that easy. So hey guys if you want to learn how to do concrete like we do, if you want to start your own concrete business like I have, then check out the link to the Concrete Underground down in the description below and in there is my private training. I can help you with all types of concrete finishing stuff like we do pouring concrete, stamping concrete, uh, starting your own business, how to run your own business, doing estimates. That's going to be in the Concrete Underground, guys. Plus, you know, you have access to me for one-on-one -on -one help through the forum. So check that out down in the description below. Thanks for watching. You know, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Come back and I put out a couple videos out a week. And this is how it's done, guys. Thanks. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.